Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're gonna look at what are C-sharp delegates, how do we define them, and how can we use them in our code. So first thing I wanna do is just define what is a delegate. A delegate is an object that knows how to call a method. Now we define methods all the time in our code, like this one, and a delegate is an object that knows how to call this method. A delegate defines the method's return type and its parameter types. And we can see, of course, the return type is here, an integer, and the parameter type, it takes one parameter, and it is an integer as well. Now, a delegate to call this method would be defined like this. Delegate integer, we give it a name, transformer, and integer x. Now, the delegate has to match the method's return type, and it has to match the method's parameters. The number of parameters it has as well as the parameter types. So on this method, there's only one parameter an integer. So of course, the delegate has to have the same exact return and parameter types. So let's go over to Unity. And first thing is to write a script. I'm gonna need a new game object. So this will just be test delegates. I will make a script on here called delegate example and let's open this script up with C sharp and I also want to create a cube so I'm just going to do a 3d object cube and put that at 0 0 0 make sure the test delegates is also over there all right so we have a simple cube at 0 0 0 we have a script to test the delegates with now we use functions all the time I'm just gonna define a simple private void return type we don't need to return anything and I'm gonna say move cube up and it's just gonna move that cube up now because it's on a different game object we're gonna take a transform so I'm gonna say transform we'll just say call it T and we'll do a float amount and that's how far it's going to move the cube up so we could say t dot position plus equals new vector 3 and we'll do 0f amount on the y-axis and another 0 right there so a simple function and we also are going to need to get access to that cube. So I'll do a public transform. Just call it the cube. And when the script starts, we'll call our uh, method here. And we're going to pass in the cube. We're going to move the cube up. And we'll just move it up by 5. So let's go back to Unity and we're going to need to assign the cube and if we hit play we'll see that it moves up to five and that's all the basic stuff now let's bring a delegate into this example so i'm going to define a delegate so we're going to say delegate and it needs to be void because the move cube up function is void and I guess I'll just call this one cube mover and this is of course where you assign uh, the name of the delegate and this has to take the same types so maybe I'll just copy those and paste them in it needs a transform and a float so that's all we've so that's all it takes to define the delegate and of course we have the matching return type and the matching parameter types 
So I'm going to delete this line that calls the method and we'll use a delegate instead. So to do that, we'll do cube mover. So cube mover and we'll just call that CM and that's equal to move cube up. So this has made a new object of type cube mover and it's been assigned to call this function. So what we can do at this point is we could say cm and we just have to pass in a transform and the float amount. So I'm going to pass in cube and we'll do 5f again. Now I want to clarify two two things here. First of all, this is short for cube mover and I'll just call it CM2 for a second example and is equal to new cube mover of type move cube up. So these two lines are exactly the same. This one is shorthand. But what you're doing when you type cube mover cm equals move cube up is you're saying cube mover cm equals a new cube mover of type move cube up. So you can use either one, of course, this is just the short way to write it. And I want to specify the same thing here. When we do CM and then cube5f, what we're actually saying is CM dot invoke cube5f. So these are the same, same thing again. It's just when you write it this way, it's shorthand. And the invoke word does not have to be typed. So without actually calling this function myself, the delegates are going to call the function for me. And I, it should actually happen twice. We should uh, see the cube get moved all the way up to 10. It's out of the screen, so but I could see that the y-axis is at 10 so that exactly that happened the method was called twice once from the CM object and then the CM2 object called it again and once again just to clarify I wrote these out the same exact way the CM is the shorthand and the CM2 is written out the long way now you're probably saying why didn't you just call the method normally in the first place? And the reason is that delegates let you do a lot of stuff that you can't do by just calling a regular method. So let's look at some of those. The first one is a plugin method. Now delegate variables are assigned functions at runtime. And this is useful for writing plugin methods. And a plugin method takes a method as a parameter. So let's take a look at that. This is also called a higher order function because it's a function that takes a function as an argument. So I'm going to make a new function and it'll be void. I'm going to move a bunch of cubes with it. So I'm going to say move cubes. And move cubes needs some transforms. So I'm going to make a transform array. And we'll just call those T again. And then what we're going to put here is a cube mover. And I'll call it cube mover CM. So here we can assign a delegate as a parameter. And that means that a method is getting assigned here as a parameter. Now we're going to have a bunch of cubes to move. 
So I'm going to do four and press tab twice. So it auto completes that for me. And I'm just going to say the transforms dot length. So let's go through all of these transforms. And we're going to say CM Q mover. And I'm going to do the T I. And this is kind of confusing. So let me call this transforms. There we go. So we have a bunch of transforms. And we're going to go through all of the transforms, the length of this array. And then we're going to say cube mover, the current transform. So transform I. And cube mover also needs a float amount. So I'm just going to press in i as the amount, even though i is an integer. It's going to be able to cast that to a float. And now I have a function to move the cubes. We just need an array of cubes, which means that these guys won't work anymore and let's go back and to, to unity and make a couple of cubes here we could easily do that with a duplicate and that is 100 cubes so I better make a parent game object and put that at 0 0 0 to get all of these cubes into it. Okay, so we have 100 cubes. Let's assign that here. I'm going to select all the cubes and drag it. But we can't drag it until we go to test delegates, lock it in place. Now I'm going to grab all of these cubes and drop them right here so they assign themselves into the array of 100. Now going back to our script, we already have a new uh, cube mover. In fact, we got two of the cube movers defined. We don't need both of them, but that's okay. And what we can do is call move cubes. Now move cubes wants a transform, an array of transforms. So that's cubes. And it also wants a cube mover. So I'm gonna just pass in CM. And the top one, of course, is the only one that we're using. And I'm going to delete this text. But remember that we're doing shorthand. And we, even though we're calling an invoke, we don't actually uh, we don't actually have to type it right here. OK, so we have an array of cubes. We have a delegate called cube mover. We create a new cube mover object. And we assign one method to it, move cube up. And then we call a function move cubes, which takes an array of transforms and a cube mover. And it goes through all of those and it says the cube mover for each one of the transforms, for each one of the cubes, move it up by I. Well, let's go over to Unity and see what we get. We're going to have cubes going up into the sky in some sort of some sort of an array. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to look like. But here we go. So, you can see that each cube was moved 1 through 100, so the cube down here should be at 1, or 0, and the one at the top should be at, at 100 or 99. So we see it at 99, and the one that, all the way down here at 0. So this is just a small, simple example of how you can use delegates to pass methods as parameters 
and that actually creates what they call a higher order function. Now, the other really useful thing about delegates is multicasting. Now, all delegate instances have multicast capability, and that means that multiple methods can be assigned to single delegate instances, not just one. So let's take another example here. I'm going to create another function called move cube right. And we'll make another one called move cube left. And they're the same exact the transform and a float amount. Uh, the only difference is we're moving on the x axis. And to move it to the left, we're moving on the negative x-axis. So what we can do here is we've already assigned move cube up to our delegate instance CM. But because this is a void transform float, and all of these functions are void transform floats, they can also be assigned to our delegate instance. To do that, we would just say cm plus equals move cube right. And now, if we go back into Unity, and let's restart the scene, we're going to get something that's pretty close to the same. Uh, they did get spread way out here and we can see how they went in this direction now and maybe a, another way to visualize this would be make one called rotate cube and then we're just gonna say t dot rotation t dot Euler angles plus equals the same thing and now we can do cm plus equals rotate cube and I'm gonna take away the move cube right let's go back and press play and see what happens of course both functions get called and towards the bottom you would have a regular cube with no rotation and towards the top you're going to get a cube with a rotation of 93. So delegates are useful here because with one single delegate instance we can assign multiple methods and have it call multiple methods. Now you could also take them away with the minus equals. So you can add and remove methods from your delegate instance by doing the plus equals or minus equals. Now let's take a quick moment to realize that that is shorthand for CM equals CM plus rotate cube. So you're saying the cube mover is equal to a new instance of a cube mover and that new instance of a queue mover calls, of course, two methods. So this is a really simple example and not that practical, but delegates, understanding delegates in C Sharp and Unity is really useful and it's necessary when you get to events because events, the C Sharp event system and the Unity event system completely works by using delegates. Now in future videos when I use things like C sharp event systems or cover the lambda expression I'm gonna be talking about delegates so it's important for me to get this video made first and also it kind of ties into a larger course I'm developing for Udemy on C sharp programming.
to prepare you for the Microsoft 70-483 programming in C-sharp test and also how it ties into Unity and how some of these abstract C-sharp uh, ideas tie into Unity development and game development. So thank you for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more. I'll be back as soon as I can.